Is something fishing going on in Cleveland? We'll find out today on Forum 360, the show with a local view but a global perspective. I'm Sally Henning. Welcome to Forum 360. Today we find out if something fishy is going on in Cleveland, as I said, as we meet Stephanie White, the general manager of the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. Welcome to Forum 360, Stephanie. Good morning, thank you very much. Now I understand uh, that before you were general manager at the uh, Greater Cleveland Aquarium that you were the curator. Yes. Could so you please tell us what's a curator? <laughs> what's General a curator? General manager, I figured out. <laughs> we are in our 12th year of operation, and so when we opened, my role was curator, and that means that I was responsible for the animal husbandry, the animal care team, um, all of the behind the scenes work, and then also the selection of the species that are in our aquarium. Now, now I have a husband, so what's this husbandry stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so husbandry is the daily <laughs> care of the animals, right? Yes. So it's really that uh, nutrition, enrichment, all of what goes into keeping the animals healthy and um, at the aquarium. Well, speaking of the aquarium, I recently took my grandchildren to the aquarium and they just couldn't get enough of petting the stingrays. So how, tell, let's, let's talk about what the things that happened there, these exhibits, how did that come about? Having a petting farm in an aquarium? <laughs> the aquarium experience, we definitely have some interactive elements to it. So we have two touch pools. One is the stingray touch pool. It's an 11,000 gallon open pool where the stingrays, we have three different species of stingrays. And as they swim by, then the guests can uh, two fingers gently touch on the back and the wings, um, feel what they what they feel like. And so kids really could stand there all day long Yes, and have that experience <laughs> of if they want to touch them all or they want to touch that one again, or maybe they're a little nervous and scared. And so it takes them a few times to really kind of put their hand in and see what it's like. Well, what, what are your favorite exhibits? My favorite exhibit, so I um, definitely am a fan of turtles. We have de several different species of turtles, but also one of my recent favors is our sea dragon exhibit. Um, we are one of a few facilities across the world With who baby have sea dragons. reared sea dragons over the last couple years, and it really has been a great success story about our animal care and the species, and then a great uh, education message. So tell me about the challenge of animal care that taking animals out of the wild and having them in an aquarium, that must be pretty unique issues. Animal care is, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. We don't take off for Christmas or anything like that. And we have a team of about 30 employees who are directly responsible for the animal care. And one extra step for an aquarium is we have to do that underwater diving, right? We have to do the maintenance of our exhibits with scuba divers every day to make sure that the water quality is suitable. Uh, where do you get scuba divers in Cleveland, Ohio? <laughs> so you can dive in Lake Erie, but other than that, there's not many opportunities. So we do have a staff of divers um, who are underwater every day for many hours um, doing that cleaning, the vacuuming, the scrubbing, and then also the high fives and the waves to the kids for that inspiration of that uh, diver underwater. You know, they're kind of like loud, they have bubbles, and we do have sharks and scuba talks, so you can talk to a diver while they're underwater, so it's a really <laughs> cool moment. So when you're advertising Help Wanted Scuba Divers <laughs> Cleveland, do yes. you get a you know, people calling say, yeah, really. <laughs> it's definitely a unique position, and there's not <laughs> many water, people out unique. there. <laughs> but yes. Are you a scuba diver, too? I am, yes. Oh, yeah. oh. Yes. Okay. And so a diver in an aquarium is a little bit different than an open water diver, where people are watching you dive. Usually a scuba diver is a solo sport where, you know, you leave your family on the shoreline or on the beach, and you wave to them, and then you come back with all these uh, remarkable stories, but in an aquarium, people are watching you and they're really understanding how you're breathing. <laughs> That's a lot to watch. You're from Northeast Ohio? I am, yes. How did you get involved with the aquarium? What brought, what brought you there? So I um, grew up um, outside of Akron and I had my degrees in marine biology. So I have that background in marine science, which is what led me into the cur uh, career of the curator. And um, so really now as general manager, it's kind of full circle. I have the biology background and I'm now in the role for the business side and to kind of make sure that, um, you know, we are inspiring and educating here in local Northeast Ohio about animals that are across the globe, saltwater and freshwater. 
So your saltwater animals include sharks? Sharks. <laughs> sharks. Another of my grandchildren's favorites was the sharks. You have an exhibit where the sharks are actually over the head of the people that are walking in. We have four species of sharks at the aquarium, and one of our uh, fan favorites is our sea tube. And so with the sea tube, you walk under the water, so you're dry, and the animals are above you. So you feel like you're in the aquarium, and not, you're not like just looking at it. Inches away from a shark, right, as they're swimming over your head. So maybe you see their teeth, their jaw, their eyes, their dermal denticles, any part of the shark, or maybe it's many sharks over your head at the same time. And their what dermal cool ventricles? What are their dermal ventricles? What they breathe um, with? Yeah, that's like their scales um, that's covering their skin. So it's rough like sandpaper. And so when you get that up close view, right, you're only four inches away because that's the thickness of the acrylic and uh, you can really get that close view of them. So I guess you're not going to have a shark petting uh, area <laughs> recently. No, okay, well, <laughs> so we've talked about how you got to the aquarium. How did the aquarium get to the particular location that it is in? Can you talk about the, the building in the neighborhood a little bit? Of course. So um, the Greater Cleveland Aquarium is in the historic powerhouse building, and the powerhouse was built in the late 1800s, for the steam plant for streetcars, downtown transportation in Cleveland. And so we're retrofitted in this historic building, but we're also in the basement. So it's a lot of challenges, but some very unique. So I have to tell you, if I was looking around for a family-friendly museum, I don't know, when I think of the flats where the aquarium is located, I think, well, excuse me, of bars and uh, things like that. I don't really think about that being, and, and the federal court which is over <laughs> the gym. So I don't really know that. So how did that come about as a choice? So we are on Flats West Bank, and before us, you're right, the nightlife was the reason to go to the West Bank of the Flats. We are the family-friendly attraction. We're open seven days a week. And so during the daytime, you can take a stroll on our boardwalk along the Cuyahoga River, and there's a lot of water sports there. You can watch the birds and the barges. There's also a dining cruise ship, so you, maybe you combine your, your um, outing for the day and you get on the water and then you come to the aquarium. And so there is many things nowadays other than that nightlife on the West Bank. So the aquarium is sort of integrated into the neighborhood in terms of there being walks and to the water from there that people can take advantage of the proximity to the river there, et cetera? Absolutely. So you can take a stroll along the Cuyahoga River, or we're a short trail away from Wendy Park. And so if you want to make a full day out of it, you can go to the Lake Erie, see the shoreline, go to the river, and then come inside at the aquarium and see some of the species that maybe live in that habitat. Well, speaking again about the aquarium, what's your passion? What's the most important thing? My passion is really to make sure that um, we are inspiring that next generation. We are raising awareness. We're spreading the education, but also having a place where it's fun for, like you said, you brought your grandkids, oh, right? I love it. We have members who come frequently. Maybe they want to bring their toddler in, or maybe they want to bring the grandkids and make an experience and a family-friendly memory for them. Um, we are unique, and some of our exhibits are toddler-friendly. So. Um, close to the ground, full viewing windows, 360 degree views on some of our cylinder exhibits. So it's a really fun way to interact with those animals and make that connection. So maybe then you can take it outside of the aquarium and really then maybe it's something you've never seen before or maybe you see a turtle next, you know, in the park next door all the time. And so then you can have those moments in both nature and the aquarium. So and you have like ticket type packages like for grandparents where they can bring in multiple grandchildren and repeat it and things like that. You have all types of... Uh yeah, so we have general admission, but then we also have those memberships where if you have grandkids or a family, you can add children to the membership and then you can visit us all year round. So, so since we have 18 grandchildren... I think <laughs> <laughs> you can add them or with grandkids, you know, six at a time. <laughs> so what are, the, what are some of the challenges and opportunities of being in this particular location? So with being built in that historic building, right? So we have a lot of architecture that the engineers were building around. And so in the powerhouse, you have these long coal tunnels where they used to store the coal for the steam plant. And now we have um, aquariums in them. And so different habitats 
um, one of our our giant Pacific octopus. It adds to octopus. the mystery of the walk. It does, right? And so then not only can you see the brick walls, but then you can also see the nature. You're talking about the octopus. It's a really cool moment. Yeah, the octopus it's is a big octopus. an archway exhibit. So you can walk under and then uh, you can see the uh, octopus from two perspectives, overhead or from the front. So from, from tendril to tendril, how long is the octopus? How big is the octopus? Oh, right the now. The biggest octopus. Yeah, that's a good question. Right now, I bet um, about uh, probably eight feet from tip of arm to tip of arm. Yes. That must get some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Definitely. <laughs> and so back to that animal care, um, our aquarist team, they are the ones that are responsible for that daily care. And so we do a lot of enrichment with the octopus. And that enrichment is to keep it stimulated. And so whether it's a toy or a different food item or a different way of introducing it, or even cleaning. Sometimes the octopus wants to help us clean, too. <laughs> so really? <laughs> it'll grab the scrub brush or it'll grab the pole. And you know that's then a, a new activity for the day. So, that's, that's, so if someone were to come up to you and they were to say, Oh, I just got off a spaceship. Why would anyone go to an aquarium? What would you tell them? Well, so there is those um, animals that maybe you've never seen or those animals that you see frequently, but maybe this is a different perspective. And so when you come and you're able to enjoy it, and then all of our signage, whether it's about the species or whether it's a call to action, how you then can take what you learn back to um, you know, nature or back to your life and maybe it's about recycling or maybe it's about conservation and how to better use products and repurpose them. And so it's all about how we can help in our own way. So you just brought up a very important subject. So the uh, Forum 360 is not just about the local perspective but also the global perspective. So how do you see the, the, uh, the aquarium contributing not just at a local level but even broader picture to the global perspective on such things? So, um, I mean, we here have the great resource of Lake Erie in our backyard, right? So that freshwater resource. But also, how do we here in Cleveland connect to the ocean? How can we educate about maybe uh, we work with Alliance for the Great Lakes on Adopt-a-Beach cleanups, and we work with Drink Local, Drink Tap on those Adopt-a-Beach cleanups. And so we take, whether it's a school group or a volunteer group out, and we're picking up that debris and that trash, but not only are we doing that, but we're, we're counting it, we're collecting data, so that then, you know, maybe next time you had that water bottle, you would think about using a repurposed water bottle, or you would think how to properly discard it and not allow it to go back into the waterways. So it's not just about entertaining my grandkids. <laughs> That's a big part of it. <laughs> but it's, it's, there's an impact on the rest of the world in terms of what you're attempting to accomplish in your mission. And so uh, we're 12 years of operation. We're um, this year going to see our 3 millionth visitor. And really, we've seen visitors across all 50 states. We've seen them across many different countries. And so really, what is the message that we can give out? Um, and how can we make that impact exactly? You're tuned into Forum 360. Uh, today, our special guest from the Greater Cleveland Aquarium is Stephanie White, who's the general manager of the aquarium. And it's just talking about the impact of the aquarium, both locally and, and internationally. And so teaching and entertaining and what now? What do you what do you see for the future? So really, how can we better connect with that uh, that nature, that environment, right? So one of the programs that we've started is urban birding walks, and so urban bird watch urban birding walks. Bird, okay. And so we have an educator that will go out on these bird tours, and so really, um, Wendy Park in Lake Erie is a great. Uh, location for bird migration and so really kind of bringing that awareness to the guests and taking a birding walk and understanding um, we're in downtown but really how is that a part of the migration pattern so so really kind of trying to connect more with that it's more than the buzzards coming back to Hinkley yes it's more than the buzzards to Hinkley is that possible? <laughs> now not only you have people who are inside the aquarium during a normal period to, to answer questions and, and uh, provide guidance and interpretation too, don't you? We do have guest experience associates in all of the galleries. And so during the day, during the visit, if you had a question about an animal or maybe a behavior or maybe a feeding, then that's a great person that can really, they have a passion for nature and for animals too. And so that's a great way to have a conversation. Um, we do have activities throughout the day, so the guest experience associates help with those. We have feedings where not only can you stand 
stand at the stingray touch pool and interact with the animals, but we do have daily feedings where guests can help feed those oh, stingrays. Too much fun. <laughs> what do stingrays eat? <laughs> oh, so it's a variety of diet, but their favorite is shrimp. And of course, you know, peeled, not cooked shrimp. So a little different, but same uh, grade of shrimp that we would eat. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so what are some of the favorite uh, animals that people like to see that are like unique to this aquarium? So our unique animals, so that first gallery when you walk in are um, freshwater, they're Ohio lakes and rivers. They're what you might have already had that connection with in your daily life. Or and had for supper that week. Or <laughs> had for supper that week. <laughs> <laughs> so one of our um, highlights in our Ohio gallery is our two turtle species that we've been able to head start and with many different partners in the we, region. We don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've been able to uh, rear them, head start them in the aquarium and then yeah. We take them back out into their native habitat and we release them and then we track them and we're able to help support those populations growing as the spotted turtle and the blanding turtle are both turtles that we have in our backyards and our wetlands but how, are how threatened. How do you, uh, they're threatened with extinction? Yes. How, how do you track them? Do so that. different devices we're able to put on them and we partner with uh, two organizations in particular, Wild Forever and Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And so we're able to put a GPS tracker on these turtles wow. that we've released. And then with telemetry, we're I able to- I can't even find my phone. Yes. We're tracking turtles. <laughs> we're tracking turtles in the wetland, exactly. It's pretty remarkable. So who are some of the other organizations that you partner with, that the museum partners, uh, that the aquarium partners with? We um, definitely are, it's important for us to be a part of our community. And so um, we've had partnerships for many years now with United Black Fund and with Hunger Network. And so Hunger Network, we just had that partnership in November. And so we do that annually and it's really important for us to give back to our community and then also have that food drive so that people are aware of, um, you know, maybe it's our neighbors that we need to help. And so Hunger Network and the United Black Fund have really been two strong partners that we've worked with. That's pretty exciting. So what's some, what are some of the annual events that you're proudest of? We just ended our holiday season. So if you haven't been there with your grandkids, <laughs> Scuba Claws, an underwater, you know, the, Scuba Claws? the guy in the big red suit goes underwater. He has a full face the mask reindeer on. reindeer don't swim very well. No. <laughs> he brings elves, but not reindeer. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> and so the kids can have that moment where they actually tell Scuba Claws underwater what their holiday wish is. And he can talk to them about maybe <laughs> cookie style or reindeer or seahorses or whatever they're interested in. The North Pole is not that wet. <laughs> it is warmer in our uh, aquarium than it is probably in the North Pole. <laughs> what are some of the events in the spring and summer that the, that the aquarium is looking forward to accomplishing? So our spring event is called Spring Discovery Days, and it's really a moment to focus on those smaller animals. So yes, everyone wants to come and see the sharks, but how can we make sure that everyone's, um, you know, a couple years ago, we were all reminded to take a step back and focus on the details and, and have those moments. And so really, how can we look at those smaller creatures? And then, of course, in summer, we have Fin Fest, which we plan around shark days and so shark week and so we celebrate and we have that awareness and um, what, what is fin fest fin fest is is um all about um how sharks um are needing our help right in the wild their populations are also being reduced and so how we can help to raise that awareness and also it's just about having that connection with the animals so coming in watching it eat having that scuba diver talk and understanding how the scuba diver is in the water with the sharks and they're not afraid of them. Okay, warning for the audience. The next question could be sensitive. It's a little scary. Okay, hold on. Step away, step away. Piranhas. <laughs> piranhas. Let's talk about the piranhas. <laughs> Everyone, right, you hear about it in maybe the movies and so you come in wanting to see this fierce creature. Have they eaten any of the staff yet? No. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Thanks, me. Um, and so the piranhas, we do have... Um, How many piranhas do you have? Oh, that's a great question. I believe we have eight piranhas. Uh -huh. uh, they're all full grown. But are you they would well behaved? Also be, <laughs> yes. Um, you would also be interested in the size of them. And so really they have shimmery scales and they're gold, they're beautiful. And so you focus on that and not these jaws that the movies have made it out to be. Do you have special dentists for them? 
<laughs> no, but we do highlight them in our fall events, pumpkins and piranhas. <laughs> pumpkins and piranhas. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Do you do the jack-o'-lanterns to look like piranhas? We do have a carving <laughs> contest, and then they go in the tank with the piranhas. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was that? Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. So um, with the scuba cloths that you were talking about a minute ago, who came up with that as an idea? So we've had scuba claws almost every year that we've been open, and we've been 12 years of operation. Each year, there's a little bit of a different experience with scuba claws. Um, and our members now, we do have milk and cookie night, so they can come, <laughs> they can get that milk and cookie and see scuba claws. No, what is milk and cookie? And night? people really, members have come back year after year for that family photo, and to really have that, you know, sometimes when you go to see Santa, it's kind of scary, but scuba claws is behind an acrylic window and underwater, so it takes some of that pressure off. So milk and cookie night, is is that in pajamas or what is that? A lot of people do wear, <laughs> yes, holiday attire or pajamas. <laughs> T tell me a little bit about conservation activities that the aquarium gets uh, partners with or uh, promotes. That Spotted Turtle and Blanding's Turtle work, we've been a partner with a group called Spotted Saving and Protecting Ohio Turtle Diversity. And really now we're on our 10th year within that partnership and it's real important um, in a message at the aquarium, you can see the species, but then also maybe um, allowing our residents here in Northeast Ohio to know that they are in our backyards. If someone wants to get more involved with the aquarium, maybe be involved with fundraising or being a docent or whatever, what, what are some of the opportunities? So we do have a nonprofit splash fund, and with that- A splash fund. <laughs> we do have our conservation projects with our volunteers, those adopt the beach cleanups. And also we do internships. And so really those internships are hands-on experience for college students who maybe want to make sure that this is the career path that they're interested in or um, whether the internship is in marketing or whether it's animal care or life support. Learning the filtration behind an aquarium is really important. And so those internships are a way that if you're interested in this field, you should definitely check them out. Have you have opportunities for partnerships with the local universities here in terms of their marine biology programs and things like that? So interesting that we are um, here in Hudson High School too, right? And so right. This, we this, have- this, this show is recorded at the studios of Hudson Cable, which is located in Hudson High School in Hudson, Ohio. Yes. They have a marine science program, and so they have been bringing students and field trips to the aquarium since 2017. Wow. So we've seen hundreds of Hudson High School students come through the aquarium programs, wow. which then were just another way that they could have that hands-on learning from what they've learned in the classroom. So you have career days and educational opportunities? We do have career days, we have field trips, which um, whether it's elementary, preschool, high school, and uh, there's many different programs within those field trips. And the career days are a way, or homeschool days, are a way that then you can have that next level of learning. And so career days, maybe um, you're a middle school student who's just interested in science, or maybe you're a high school student who is really looking at universities, and maybe that is a career path that you want to join. What's your biggest challenge for the future with the aquarium? Wow, that's a question, right? <laughs> so my biggest challenge today, probably, right? We're starting a new year, and what can we make sure that we all accomplish in 2024 as a team and as an aquarium, and how we can have that inspiration every day, not just to the families, but to the students. So speaking of students, for the young people who may want to go into a career that involves marine biology or being involved with aquariums or, or uh, what, what do you recommend to them to do in terms of preparation in their life? And Besides coming to the aquarium. <laughs> yeah, and you know, myself um, included, I'm from Northeast Ohio, and so um, when I was growing up, my inspiration was SeaWorld, right? So that oh. is what definitely uh, started my interest in the aquatic world well, and Ralph fish. <laughs> yes, Good and guess. so the, the fact that we maybe are that attraction and we're having that impact in, in the student's life, and so really, you know, um, kind of diving in, having those, making sure you're doing those volunteer activities or you're kind of really exploring and finding what you really love is important. What's next for you? What's next for me? Oh, goodness. So um, I would like to get back underwater, right? So maybe I could become <laughs> that scuba diver again so I could have those up-close moments. <laughs> well, speaking of SeaWorld, one of their displays was 
where they had an oyster where you could yes, pick a the pearl cutter. diver. Right, and and my oldest son was absolutely fascinated with that, and of course he got the biggest pearl when they opened it up. <laughs> but it, it, that hands-on experience stays with you. It does. Yeah, what, does. What, what's your favorite hands-on experience at the aquarium? So we have an invertebrate touch pool, and in the invertebrate touch pool we have cleaner shrimp. Okay, and what is it, what are invertebrates? What shrimp? What other types of animals are in there? So in that um, touch pool, it's uh, shallow, and so you're able to touch the animals, whether it's a sea star, a sea urchin, um, maybe it's a horseshoe crab. It's like a tidal pool. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so then the cleaner shrimp, you have to be steady, and you can put your fingers, your hand in, and then they come and they approach you, and then they will walk and crawl o all over your hand. I guess kids don't want to leave that. They don't want to leave that. <laughs> It, it, it's such a discovery. It is, right? And so then it's um, maybe you try to uh, have multiple shrimp discover your hand, or maybe you move to a different area, or maybe then you're um, looking for the shrimp in the comparison to the stingrays. Well, what's your favorite exhibit? So, um, of course, the sea tube, right, with the sharks. And in the shark exhibit, we have two different species of stingrays, three different species of sharks, and many different fish. And so you're really kind of having that habitat, whether they're swimming above you or around you. A lot of first choices. <laughs> A lot of first choices. You're too, you've been tuned into Forum 360. Our special guest today is the general manager of the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. Uh, Stephanie White, and we welcome, thank you so much for coming and joining us on Forum 360 as we talk about one of the gems of Cleveland, the, the aquarium. Thank you so much for coming to Forum 360. Thank you, thank you for having me. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.